Hi, is that Matt? Sure. Hi, this is Daisy. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. All right. Um, so we've just got a few questions to ask you, by the way. Um, I'm Bella. And I'm Ryan. Hey. Okay. Hello. So, um... Oh, it's a voice recording. Is that okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. Awesome. Okay, so out of an area management plan or a device to trap cane codes, which would you believe? Which do you believe would be more effective to help the northern quolls? Um, it's a good question. And probably the, those two components are really different. I think it's hard to compare them as, as apples and apples. So um, probably like your, your cane code traps up form part of an action outside or inside of a management plan. But in terms of actual reducing the cane toe numbers, obviously the trap works best, um, and that's going to have a flow-on effect to conserving the northern quoll. But in terms of which one is better, it's pretty hard to, to say, to give you an answer there, because they're two very different different things. Okay, thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does. Um, what aspects of an area management plan do you think would help them? Would help with spotted tail quoll? Yeah. The northern quoll, sorry? Yeah. Um, uh, I think all the background information and research that goes into a management plan would be pretty useful. It might highlight some, um, some important things that we're missing or it might identify some high-risk areas that, that should be targeted for quoll conservation. But, in, but the specific actions that come out of a plan probably would be the combination of um, reducing cane toads in, in the population, um, ensuring that suitable habitat is maintained and connected um, for the species to travel through and expand into, yeah. um, keeping an eye on developments and road infrastructure, so making sure the road infrastructure is going to go through a particular area that underpasses, overpasses, for the fencing is put in place to reduce any incidents of road death. Um, and I think general education within the community to make sure they understand that there's an endangered species or threatened species in the area and these are the things they should be doing to conserve um, the species. And I guess the consultation with the local indigenous um, people in the area, they might have some pretty important information to put in place there and also um, have a role to play in the management of all the, the actual on ground works of that plan. Okay, awesome. Um, um, so, what aspects of a cane toad trap do you think could help the northern quoll? I think just that the you know the, the cane toad trap. So, I assume we're talking about the um, the ones you put in the dam to get rid of the tadpoles. Uh, we were thinking more of one that you put in the ground to trap them. Yeah, look, well, any, any any trap device, method, physical collection of cane toads that you remove them from the environment and from the ecosystem has got to be a positive. There may be a case to argue that in a lot of places the horse is bolted and that in fact you know, a small amount of collection is probably not going to do anything, but a targeted approach in a particular area, um, you know, like in a, in a one particular national park or something should have a pretty good impact on the quoll population. So I think that a combination of tadpole traps and adult collection and adult toad traps um, is a pretty important part of, of anything to do to conserve quolls. Okay. Yeah. Um, what do you think that we could do as students to help save them and other well, endangered species? Yeah, it's all about having the knowledge, isn't it? So if you're aware that there's threatened species out there, and then you're one step close to being able to conserve them, and then if you're aware of a few things you might be able to do to conserve them, then that's one step of, uh, ahead as well. So I think getting the information out to your family and your students, your friends and other students, um, is a pretty big, pretty big part of, of conservation in general. Because um, given five years' time, you probably will have graduated and could be graduate positions and then in 10 years time you'll be in management positions where you could be implementing some of these conservation actions so um, having that having that prior knowledge is pretty important what do you think you should you could be doing well um at the moment like what we're doing is um this project obviously so we we see ourselves 
helping by um, doing all that we can. And this interview that we're doing now helps to like get us a, give us a better idea as to what we should be doing rather than just doing things that are useless. So that's why we're asking whether the area management plan or the cane toad chat would be more effective. Yeah. And I think uh, if you're, I mean, obviously you're on the Sunshine Coast, is that right? Yeah. yeah. So you can't, there's nothing you can do to help Northern Qual in your local area. But if you're a high school in an area where Northern Qual were, then there's on-ground things you could be doing like collecting toads or manning toad traps or planting trees or communicating with the public or something like that. So there is definitely on-ground things that students can do to help conserve endangered species. Probably a lot of endangered species on the Sunshine Coast that mm -hmm. students in your school could do. So, certainly on ground projects are absolutely feasible for schools to be involved in. Okay, and awesome. Fun, you know, planting trees, putting weeds, good. Yeah, okay. Um, do cane toads have any negative impact on other species that you're aware of? Oh, lots and lots. I, I think there's probably a lot of snake species that potentially would eat um, young juvenile cane toads that, that would become sick, I think there's probably birds that would become sick. There's probably um, a lot of species that compete for the insect, for their food resource that cane toads might eat. Cane toads may be better adapted to move around or quicker or make, or make the most of that resource, so they could have an impact on other native um, amphibians that are not related to predation but related to competition. So yeah, look, lots and lots and lots of animals would have a, would be affected, and and then you've got the um, the food chain impact. So if if, if the toads are out competing native frogs, then there's less native frogs for whatever eats native frogs to be eating, and so on and so forth. So the impact up and down the food chain, I think, is quite significant. Do you want specific species names? No, no, no. We were just um, wondering. So yeah, that I think, yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, do you know of anything already being done to help Northern Qual um, numbers? Oh, no, <laughs> sorry. I don't deal much with Northern Quals at all. I deal with spotted tail quals here in South East Queensland. But yes, there would be any of the um, natural areas management teams, the state government teams up in the wet tropics would absolutely be doing things to conserve the species. So, um, yes, yeah, sorry, I can't help you there. No, that's all right. Thanks. Um, why should people care about the endangered species species of Australia and do they have an, a significant importance to our ecosystem? Um, the first bit, the second bit first, yes, quite a large number of our endangered, threatened um, species have a significant importance to the ecosystem around them, that they wouldn't have a role in the ecosystem otherwise. So yeah, I think all wildlife really is, is, has a, a very important plot role to play in the ecosystem. Even if it's from a food chain perspective, they may prey upon animals, they may um, be preyed upon themselves. So stabilising that food chain is pretty important. There's all kinds of other you know, um, pollination impacts for flying foxes, etc. There's lots of, lots of uh, associated benefits with, with wildlife. So losing any particular species from the ecosystem is a disaster. And why should people care? I think we have an obligation to, to care about our wildlife, especially wildlife that's at risk of extinction because there's a 99.9% yep. chance that we've been a major player in the reason for their extinction or for their um, population crash. So I think we have an obligation as, as a society and as people to show some compassion for threatened species um, and spend a little bit of money or do a little bit of work or make some changes or make some small sacrifices in our day to day life just to ensure the welfare, safety and, um, and survival of native wildlife. It's, it's, yeah. You know, I think we owe it to them, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, that's all we've got. So thank you so much for doing this interview. We really appreciate it. It's going to be a big contribution towards our project. So if thank there's you. anything there that you want me to explain further, just shoot an email. It's no drama. We've got tons of time. So thank you so much. Alright. Thank you. You're good? Thank yeah. you. See ya. Alright. No worries, guys. Talk soon. Bye. Ta-da.